All right, so um, we are going to getting ready to truss these chickens up. Um, before I put them on the angle spit here, I'm just gonna run this little elastic tie around the body, mostly to keep these wings tucked back so that when it's going around on the rotisserie, they're not gonna be flapping around. It should keep everything nice and snug. My method here, I know there's a couple ways to do this, but um, I just kind of go around the wings like this. I pull the top part up here and I go around back. So that way it's holding the wings kind of in place here. And then I come up and bring it right over the drumstick, just like that. And that'll keep the drumsticks tucked in place. The angle spit's gonna go through this opening here, so I need to keep a little bit of space in there for the angle spit. So let me do that one more time. Again, tuck these wings back, slip the elastic band around the wings, and then come around the other side and tuck the drumsticks in place, just like that. So we have all of our chickens trussed here with our elastic bands, and now we're going to actually load them onto the rotisserie spit. This is our angle spit for chickens. And the way this works is um, you want the, the um, flared out part facing up, so it's gonna uh, press up against the inside breastbone of the chicken, and it holds it in place as it turns. So we just go in through the bottom and then push that through, out through where the neck is, and that keeps the bird from spinning while it's on the spit. Depending on the size of the chicken that you are cooking, uh, you should be able to get anywhere between five to seven on a spit. These birds are a little bit on the large side, so I'm gonna stick with five for this particular round. Okay, now that we have the chickens loaded up on our spit, a couple things to note here. A little bit is your spacing of the chickens. Um, you can pretty much go end to end on these, um, but I'm gonna just have a little bit of spacing between them because if you, have, if you have it covered up too much, obviously that area in the middle is not gonna get the same kind of color as the exterior part will get. And one other note, while the spit keeps the birds from spinning this way, as they cook and firm up, they can potentially move side to side. So I like to take, um, there's these little holes spaced out on the spit. So I just take a little bamboo skewer, kind of line the chicken up to where that hole is. And I just run this skewer through those holes and just try to grab a little piece of the chicken on the way out. And that's gonna keep them from sliding side to side. So this could even just be a little flap of skin um, some way just to get it to hold the bird. And that of course will also firm up as it cooks. Just like that, we're ready to load. So before we load up the rotisserie here, we're gonna briefly go over the controls. This is your control panel on the front of the unit. When the red button is lit, the unit is off and idle. The drum should not be turning. There should be no flame on in the oven at that time. This little dial here, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but this is your speed control for the drum. Uh, all the way to the left is the slowest setting and all the way to the right is the fastest setting. And of course you can adjust it and land somewhere in between if you'd like. When we go to actually start cooking products, the first thing we do is we push the green button. That engages the drum inside the unit. So there's no flame at this point, but the drum is rotating. You can also use this button uh, if you're trying to reach a spit in the back and you just want to jog to get it uh, closer to you, you can engage that. Once you have the unit loaded up, you push this orange button. When the orange light is on, it means you've got gas and flame to the unit. So you've got your decorative flame down in the front and the infrared burner up top are, are both on at that point. Going further down, these two knobs on the left hand side, it says water. This unit is, um, uh, it's required that you have a water bath connected to this or, or a water connection to it so that we can keep water circulating throughout the bottom of the chamber. This helps keep fat skimmed off the top. It keeps, uh, prevents grease fires, things like that. It also makes the unit cleaner, uh, easier to clean at the end of the night. And then on the left-hand side, we've got our gas knob. This just controls 
the uh, open visible flame in the front. So it's more decorative than anything else because the, the thing that's doing the most cooking is that infrared burner up top, which is a constant uh, burner. It's, never, it's not adjustable, it's always on. So start of the day, you really wanna turn this faucet all the way on. You wanna fill up the water in the chamber to the overflow pipe that's in the center of the unit here. Once you've established that level of water, you can back this uh, spigot off to really just a, just a nice little trickle in there. We just wanna keep enough water going so that we're skimming fat off the top down into a grease trap. And that's really all you need. So we're getting ready to load a spit of chickens onto the rotisserie. First thing I need to do is to stop it from, uh, stop the drum from turning and to turn the flame off. You can either do that by hitting the red button down below or by hitting this bump bar right here. It'll stop the drum from turning. Now walking into this, I have my idle side facing the left-hand side. The square end of the spit is on the right side. That's the drive side. So I go into the spit like this, line it up for the square uh, pocket like that, and then we're good to go. So to get to the next spit, I'm just gonna hit the, jog, the green jog button here until the next spit is in front of me. And then I'll go ahead and stop it so I can load the next round. So now that all the spits are loaded, we're gonna start the unit. Um, we're just again gonna hit the green button to start the drum turning and then our orange button to get the burners going. I'm gonna run this with the uh, gas flame all the way up. It's more visual, so if you want a little bit less flame, you can turn it down. And right now I'm gonna run this, um, the drum speed about halfway, and then I'm gonna speed it up towards the end. The faster the drum turns, the more color and uh, the chickens will get and the faster they'll cook. But if they're flopping around too much early on, you might start off with a little bit slower speed and then turn it up as they cook and firm up towards the end. So we've got our four spits loaded right now. Um, I'm just making sure that everything is um, staying nice and tied together. Everything looks great. I don't see any wings uh, loose at the moment, so those little elastic trusses are doing, doing their job. Um, as these cook, you know, the, those bamboo skewers are gonna keep the chickens from sliding right and left. So everything should stay nice and centered in the rotisserie. And uh, we're just gonna let them cook and we'll tempt them out as they, as they get close. Coming up to the two hour and 15 minute mark here, and I wanna start getting some temps on these chickens. I think we're about done. We're looking for 165, the thickest part of the breast here. And there we go. We're actually just above it and climbing, right around 168, that's perfect. Here on the edge as well, pretty even across the board. So before I pull these off, uh, I just want to point out, you know, our all the wings stayed nice and intact throughout the entire cooking process. The those little um, um, elastic bands really helped keep everything nice and tight. Our bamboo skewers here also did the job of keeping these from migrating left to right. Um, so everything looks really great. We got good color. I turned the speed of the drum up all the way the last hour, so it helped to get a little bit more color on these guys and helped sped up the chickens after they firmed up. So I'm just gonna go in here and remove a spit. So I'm gonna remove our bamboo skewers here on one end and in the back as well. When I remove these, I just uh, take a hot, or a towel here, because these spits are still hot. I remove them off the spit onto a sheet pan for hot holding or however you're going to store them until you serve them. Mm -hmm. 